Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different from the norm and we are going to recreate the creation of the Earth accurately. Yes, using the latest science and what we know. Now there are a lot of different theories to how this happened and this is a 100% scientific, uh, basically, version of what happened. So not to offend anyone, but... This is going to be as accurate as to what scientists currently agree on. And even then, they don't agree on everything, so we're going to go with the most agreed on methods for the Earth's creation. So, with that, let's begin in the vast expanse of space. So, as you can see, there isn't much, but at this time, 4.6 billion years ago, back when the solar system was new, and small particles were all over the place in the remnants of a nebula from a previous star, our solar system began to form. Now because of the limitations of this game, we aren't going to focus on the rest of the solar system so that things don't get gravitationally pulled into each other. We're just going to focus on Earth, and we're going to go to the point where small objects begin colliding. So we're talking very small in the game. This would be within the kilograms we can weigh it in. Uh, we still need a bit of scientific notation to measure it. But yeah, these are pretty small compared to planets, moons, you name it. So gravity begins to take hold of these small particles, which these aren't actually small. This is skipping forward a bit. Um, we can't actually simulate particles that are atoms or molecules in this game, so we are going to be starting with asteroids. As you can see, as the asteroids slowly coalesce through gravity, they begin forming a sphere. This is because gravitation pulls every single side or surface of the uh, ball evenly, causing it to form a perfect sphere. This is the reason that all big objects in the solar system and in the galaxy are sphere shaped. It's all because of gravity. And as more and more and more particles hit Earth, um, now we can call them meteors because we're going to skip ahead millions and millions of years, and now we can call this young Earth. And there is one thing that's inaccurate, but it's going to fix itself soon. Because it was very hot. We're talking thousands of degrees. The earth was molten. It wasn't a good place to live. It wasn't just a rock. It was a giant lava rock full of basically everything you don't want to survive. Early atmosphere did not have the oxygen we required to live, and it didn't even have water because of the heat. And as you can see on the right, each collision causes a lot of friction and other forces that cause the surface temperature to rise. But what's actually going to begin to really hurt Earth is, well, help it become the Earth we have now, is when even bigger pieces begin hitting Earth. So we're going to go into minor now. Oh, we were already in minor. Let's go with... Okay, yeah, we aren't nearly at the size yet where we can start comparing it to many known objects. But smaller, large asteroids still will be able to be absorbed by this small Earth. And as you can see, these hit the young Earth and they heat it up and cause it to expand. Now we are actually beginning to see the Earth warm. We can see the lava pits begin to form, and the Earth is hitting high temperatures, but not high enough yet. As the young Earth continues to grow, we're going to keep track of its mass, because we want it to get to about one Earth, obviously. So now we are just going to slightly spam add things to Earth as it warms up, takes a bit of damage, and expands. Now, the reason that it's currently blue is because these asteroids I'm using have water on them, but we're going to... S it doesn't actually matter because those are all going to melt soon um, from the heat. But if you look against a planet like Mercury, we have actually gained quite a bit of size in a considerably short amount of time, although it would have went on over a much longer time period in real life. So now, 
smashing it into even bigger particles, we have the Earth grow, grow, grow at an increasing rate. And now, these collisions are causing some serious heat. We're hitting the 200 degrees, but in reality, this would have been much, much higher in the thousands of degrees because of an early, thick atmosphere and, well, all of the activity causing the Earth to have a greenhouse effect, heating it up more and more, similarly to Venus today. And as these continue hitting Earth, we can see that its mass is rising, its heat is rising. Any water that was once on it has now evaporated, wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. And we are actually gaining enough that it could actually eat a full Pluto, so let's do that to speed up the process a bit. These collisions obviously do a lot more heat and add a lot more to the Earth, so let's just throw a lot more Plutos into the mix. And here we go, now we have the heat. This is a bit more accurate. So right now in the game we are at about 5,000 degrees Celsius, when in reality the heat of the Earth was around... I want to say... Let's actually check this. Young Earth temperature. I want to say it was like 4,000 degrees, but... I guess that's a question I'm not going to have an exact answer to. But it was very hot. Hot enough that nothing could survive on it. No water could form on the surface. And it was not the planet we know today. As we can see, we've actually hit almost one hundredth of the size of Earth. And now things are going to start getting interesting. Um, we can basically speed up the growth quite a bit. Because this thing can eat mercury now. Which is going to speed this up quite a bit. And now we are at about the mass of Earth. So through a lot of collisions, the Earth has finally hit the correct size. Exactly. So now things get even more interesting as the Earth begins to cool. So the Earth cools down somewhat. But not for long, because something happens soon that completely changes the course of the Earth and affects everyone even today. We are talking about 4.45 billion years ago, the Earth met a uh, another planet or planetoid, something significantly smaller than itself, uh, about the size of Mars. And what happened was this object, about the size of Mars, crashed into the Earth. And it happened at quite a uh, high speed, and it was a grazing shot. It did not hit Earth head-on. If it had hit head-on, it actually would have destroyed the world, um, or the Earth. So, what we can do is this in the game to basically simulate that. Have it going very quickly, and at a grazing shot. So let's see if this works out for us. We don't have much room to mess up. And this collision is huge. It really is one of the most important... Oh, shoot. I did not line that up very well. At least in that dimension. Oh, you gotta love really three-dimensional areas where you can't tell where the heck you're pointing things. It looks like it's pointing one way, and then it's pointing the other. It may be easiest just to use it like this, because then you can use Earth as a bit of a ballpark. There we go. So here we have Mars, which is going to have a grazing shot on Earth, I think. Unless we miss, which is fine. We can turn it. It's not the end of the world. Well, almost the end of the world, actually, if you want to be accurate about it. Here we go, and we have a grazing shot that's going to hit Earth, hopefully, if I don't mess this up completely. There we go. Nope, actually hit it there. A grazing shot that hits Earth, but not enough to actually completely destroy the Earth, but enough to do a lot of damage, which would have actually completely obliterated uh, the Mars-sized object, 
which we can simulate. If you, uh, uh, here we go. That died. So what's left over is a ring of debris, which we don't actually have a ring here, but we can actually do that very quickly. Let's just add some rings and we'll just add rings that look like Saturn's because you know that looks nice. <laughs> so now we have young Earth with a molten core now because the other planet actually had its heavy materials sink to the center of the Earth, and we have the Earth surrounded by debris from this blast. And this is 4.45 billion years before now. Now, within all of this debris, something special begins to happen. The moon forms. As the debris orbiting the Earth moves around and collides with itself, it actually does form the moon, which, shoot, I can't get this on the same plane here, or maybe I can. You know, close enough. We now have the moon, which is orbiting young Earth. Earth has this nice ring, which is going to eventually be sucked up by the moon, which is not actually traveling in the correct direction, which is slightly annoying. We may actually be able to fix this through a slight amount of tweaking. Let's see if we can do it. I mean, that's closer. It's not perfect, but that definitely is closer. We just need it to get on the same plane there, and then have it go straight in the direction we need. Eh, that's not that bad. It's at least going into the Maybe not. See, this is part of the tricky part with working with things like this. There are so many variables. <laughs> so many variables. Ah, there we go. Now it's actually going to go through the rings and actually collide with some of the particles and slowly, basically, use them to coalesce and form its... That's not right. Moon, you were not orbiting Earth properly there. The moon does not feel like playing along with this, so we're just going to auto-orbit and leave it be. So back to young Earth. <laughs> um, young Earth is now cooling down over time. Its rings are forming the moon. And young Earth continues to cool until finally, finally, okay, this is going to take a lot of time. So what we're going to do is because this is all causing lag all the particles and stuff, we're just going to save this, then we're going to start a new simulation without anything, and we're going to put Young Earth back in. Uh, Ta-da! Here is Young Earth, and let's watch it cool down on its own now. As time goes by, the temperature will drop because of radiation out into space. Wow, it's really not cooling down very quickly. There we go. We are going very fast now, hundreds of years per second. And as time goes on and on and on, finally, the Earth cools down. Now, after the Earth cooled down, it kind of... A lot of things happened. First off, we have... Oh, I forgot to add an atmosphere earlier, but it's more important now. Water began to form liquid water. It would fall down, and that would actually help cooling down the Earth, and it would kind of cause a runaway reaction. But now the Earth had liquid water, at least... Okay, yeah, it isn't evaporating on here. Good. It wasn't frozen, though, because we had the sun with air which we don't have right here but we can just set the earth to a nice temperature to melt that and there we go we have young earth with its oceans and uh pretend pangea is there you know <laughs> i can't actually control continents yet in this game no life yet, but we do have a young water planet, and it does have an atmosphere. So let's go over to our atmosphere and give it 
an atmosphere. Bam. So young Earth now begins to discover life. Now this is a long time later, but that's, that's completely fine. This video can't last 80 years. So, long time later, the first forms of life begin, which were cyanobacteria and other similar organisms that were single-celled. They used carbon dioxide, let out oxygen, and the earth began to turn green. Because there was actually no competition. These things went unchecked and they kind of just grew nothing was stopping them and eventually you just pretend the ocean is green too everything was nice and green because of all the bacteria simple plants but a problem was about to start the amount of plants and bacteria creating oxygen actually began to poison them, such as if you lock a person in a room, their carbon dioxide will poison them. And thus, the next phase of life began after a mass extinction, which caused a lot of these plants to die and bacteria, but it brought up basically modern life or a far off version of it that was able to use uh, the great, great oxygen to create energy. And that is pretty close to where we are when it comes to a time uh, timeline. Everything starts going by much faster after that. Then we have the dinosaurs, and then... Okay, one second, we gotta... <laughs> we can at least simulate that pretty well. And then we got the uh, dinosaurs uh, get hit by asteroid. <laughs> And no more dinosaurs. Here we go. Let's follow the journey of the asteroid in destroying the dinosaurs. Goodbye, dinosaurs. And... Ooh, entering the atmosphere. Bam. And extinction. <laughs> And then, after that, well, modern mammals and stuff, and today. And just imagine that this has the continents on it, and it's all good. But guys, that is my hashtag completely accurate version of the creation of the Earth in Universe Sandbox 2. As more well, features come onto the game, I may redo this again an even better version, but at the moment, this is the best I can do. So, I will see you all next time, and if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more. Also, if anything is wrong here, just correct me. Um, but make sure that it's not just a different theory you're looking at, and that, like, something's legitimately wrong. Yeah, but yeah, see you all!